How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here. <clears throat> and in this video I'm going to show you how I installed a syringe extruder on my Mingda D2 and used it to 3D print frosting on cookies and more. Before we dive into this video I want to share something that I thought was pretty interesting. I noticed that over 97% of the people who watch this channel aren't currently subscribed. So if you're interested in 3D printing, 3D scanning, or just general additive topics, go ahead and subscribe to this channel to keep up with all the latest projects that I'm working on. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. I've wanted to make a paste extruder for a long time, but never really knew where to start. I stumbled across a video by YouTuber Constantine where he designed and shared this clay extruder. And these files are on Thingiverse, so anybody can download and try them out, so I thought this would be the perfect platform to make my paste extruder. If you're interested in the mechanics of how this extruder works, I highly recommend checking out Constantine's video. He does a great job of explaining it, and it's just a total treat to watch. For this project, I'm using my Mingda D2, and to get the paste extruder to work, I had to design a mounting bracket that holds the paste extruder onto the gantry. So I just use a triangular bolt pattern as well as a small shelf, so it self-locates and bolts into place. Here's the setup I'm using for this video. I'm running Prusa Slicer 2.3 to generate the G-code, and I have to say a project like this would have been a lot more difficult without a slicer that's as easily modifiable as Prusa Slicer. Like most projects involving 3D printing, we have to do a little bit of math before we can dive in. Because I'm going to be printing on top of sugar cookies, the first thing I have to do is create an average measurement for the diameter and the thickness so I can accurately reproduce the cookies in CAD. Luckily the cookies were all pretty consistent in thickness, so I adjusted the Z offset to compensate for the thickness of the cookie on the build tray. Here's a representation of the frosting layer in Prusa Slicer. I wanted to keep this pretty straightforward, so I just added a cylinder and then changed the infill pattern and density to get to a desired result. Running through the toolpath visualization is just a good way to check to make sure there aren't a lot of interference spots and that the toolpath doesn't collide with previous paths. We can also see here the thickness of the cookie has been accounted for in Prusa Slicer, so this geometry is technically printing in midair. So with the file prepared, we can bring it right into the 3D printer. Here is one of the very first tests. It actually worked really well, and the file printed out the cookie perfectly on the first time. I was really surprised, I was expecting a lot of failures before we got to this point. You can see there's a little bit of a gap in the toolpath in the very beginning. This is caused by a small amount of the frosting leaking out of the extruder during the initial purge sequence. Keeping the flow rate consistent when you have a viscous material suspended in a syringe definitely qualifies as a non-trivial problem, but generally speaking, it worked pretty well. It was also a lot of fun going through the different infill patterns and picking out different designs. I was able to bring my girlfriend Erica into the project, and she had a lot of fun picking out different infill patterns and changing the density to get different designs. I was happy with the way that it extruded, so I wanted to try something a little bit different, and I added sprinkles to the frosting. I figured if adding carbon fiber strands to nylon can make it stronger, maybe adding sprinkles to frosting will make it tastier. And it turned out that was absolutely correct. It was also really interesting to watch, and seeing the sprinkles through the nozzle gives you a much better visualization of the flow rate of the material as it descends through the syringe. With a nozzle diameter of 4.5 millimeters, this syringe has a nozzle size that's over 11 times larger than a standard 3D printing 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This means there's a lot of material flowing here, and that can be a little bit tricky to account for when creating slicer settings. For a first attempt at the frosting extruder, I would classify this as a success. There's definitely some improvements to be made as far as the layer consistency and thickness, but overall I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. After some initial taste testing to confirm the cookies were as tasty as they looked, it was time to set my sights on my next project. And as far as food goes, it's been a personal goal of mine for, for since like 2014 or something like that. I've always wanted to 3D print a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And that is exactly what I did. To anybody who knows me personally, this is something I've been talking about doing for a long time, but it took a couple of things to make this happen. The rigid gantry of the Mingda D2 was a huge benefit here, and you can see the bread is traveling back and forth along the y-axis and there's no shaking or wobbling. So having a printer that had a rigid frame, as well as a slicer like Prusa Slicer that let me make modifications on the fly, really made this project possible. Changing the nozzle from peanut butter to jelly probably would have been easier with an automated tool changer, so maybe that'll be present in V2, but for right now, the process was pretty simple. Just remove the syringe with the peanut butter, and then replace it with the syringe with jelly. The jelly is definitely a lot harder to work with than the peanut butter. It's just so light that any little bit of air trapped in the syringe causes the jelly to come extruding out. 
A few people on Twitter had the helpful suggestion of heating the jelly so it would settle towards the bottom, and I think that's what I'll do if I do this again. You can see here the air pockets cause the jelly to come out inconsistently, so when extruding, you have all these little air pockets. I chose to think about this as being analogous to moisture in an FDM 3D printing filament, where if you have wet filament, it can cause moisture bubbles to pop, giving voids in the overall printed material. It's kind of similar, and this way I was able to not go crazy looking at this material, having all of these voids. Overall, this was a really fun project, and I have to say that printing this sandwich and eating it was by far one of the highlights of my additive career so far. It might sound silly, but it is absolutely amazing to me that this technology exists and people like you and I can benefit from it. If you're interested in learning more about this process, I highly recommend checking out Constantine's video on how he designed the paste extruder, and I've included links in the description for all the files in case you want to make one of your own. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.